The Honourable Jerry Browning. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's very interesting that the, the member uh, makes an impassioned plea for New Zealand to move progressively towards more renewable energy. What I want to say to him is that uh, in 2010 there were very significant changes to the electricity industry marketing arrangements uh, that were designed to encourage greater use of renewable energy. And in 2014, we saw that figure uh, saw just a little above 80% of our all electricity generated from renewable sources. We are on track to have that generation reaching 90% uh, no, by 2025. So there's been a fundamental shift, probably the biggest shift in the way in which electricity is dealt with in this country uh, during the last five years. There's no question about that. The bit I disagree with the member on is the assertion that unless there is a higher price paid uh, or a fairer price paid, more people will go off the grid. The reality is that uh, to stay on the grid at the moment represents a good deal for anyone who chooses to have some supplementary arrangements around uh, generation for their particular home. Uh, I know a little of this because I'm doing this myself. Uh, and I expect uh, that uh, some of the household costs that I might face will be reduced because I'll have a system that will first meet, uh, generate electricity will first meet demands at my own property and any surplus will then be exported over the import-export metre. And, and as the member said, picked up by perhaps a, a neighbour or someone else, simply because it's the, the shortest distance for any of the electrons uh, to particularly travel. But that doesn't take away the need for there to be a reliable grid for the times when there isn't huge amounts of sunlight, when there isn't sufficient electricity generated from a roof space uh, to supply either the needs or of the particular uh, residents or, or perhaps uh, any, anybody nearby as well. So the issue is then, uh, what is the balance between a, a, retail pr a, a, a wholesale price that is struck for electricity, which remember is struck on a market mechanism, uh, and the price that is paid for delivery of electricity to your home? So at the moment, if you look at it, Mr Speaker, if someone has a solar system, uh, and that's largely what we're talking about, because there isn't enough embedded wind uh, for us to really get comparative figures on at the present time, then uh, if someone is with contact energy, they'll get an eight cents an hour, a kilowatt hour payback uh, for exported electricity. If it's with Genesis, it's 5.46 cents an hour. If it's with Mercury, it's eight cents an hour. If it's with Meridian, it's a seven cent summer rate and a 10 cent winter rate. Uh, if it's trust power, it's seven cents across the year. The point here is that if you go to the deepest, darkest part of winter this year, 2015, the wholesale electricity rates just take one day, uh, which is a reasonably average sort of for the days in July, uh, then you'll get a wholesale electricity rate of somewhere around about four to 4.5 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, the electricity companies will be buying at that rate and they'll be selling at a higher rate, but they have all of the infrastructure that's necessary to generate that electricity in the first place. The uh, infrastructure to uh, monitor how much of that is being used and to actually be able to put a price on it. And I don't think that it is reasonable to say uh, that you, we want to have a structure that says that that price can't fluctuate. And the suggestion that somehow the electricity authority is going to come up with an algorithm that will deal with the embedded rate on a daily basis alongside some sort of spot price, I think is hopeful thinking. Thank you. What it will lead to is higher prices because you can't have, Mr Speaker, uh, a demand for electricity in New Zealand that is relatively constant in its growth rate, although substantially reduced on what we faced in 2009. In 2009, we were looking to have to add about 150 kilowatt hours per year, uh, 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 megawatts of generating capacity to the system each year. We're nowhere near that now because there has been this different way of dealing with electricity. Uh, but Mr Speaker, uh, to sort of say that the next step is to tie uh, the, the feed-in tariff effectively to some sort of formula struck by the uh, Electricity Authority, I think uh, will not lead to lower prices. It will lead to higher prices, in fact, uh, because the higher you go with that price, if it's struck at a reasonable rate, the greater the burden it is, or you become, as the generator, sir, in, in my case, on everybody who takes a little bit of that electricity. So I think also then you look at market trends. And right now, it's virtually impossible to watch peak hour television without seeing 
solar energy companies advertising their products at pretty attractive rates. I've got to say that there's a, quite a difference between those attractive rates and what you end up paying because of the uh, relatively small size of the systems that are being advertised in the first place. Nonetheless, the take-up rate is extraordinary. If we just look at that, uh, Mr Speaker, solar energy in New Zealand has, uh, in the last uh, uh, three years, in fact, uh, um, gone up by three times. So people are making choices about their energy security, about their energy supply, definitely not based on price, but based on what they perceive as being a good contribution they can make to good out environmental outcomes in New Zealand. And I would ask myself, why would we want to disrupt that? Why would we want to be saying we must have some compulsory system that makes it so attractive that everybody will automatically go out and sign up to it? Because that's what the member is asking for. He's asking for uh, the authority in this bill for the electricity authority to come up with some sort of uh, uh, algorithm or, or whatever it might be to determine what the daily price is or the monthly price or the yearly price for electricity. And I can't see how, how it is a good thing to say to schools, for example, who can uh, buy their electricity through, say, Meridian spot price planning uh, that might take them down as low as uh, three and a half cents uh, on some days in the winter and even lower in the summer, that in fact, uh, by having a feed-in tariff that's a much higher level, even though it won't provide all of the services to that school, there's going to be such an encouragement that they'll go out and, and make that sort of investment. They won't do it for that reason, because we are a long way from a point where the investment in solar energy is rational enough for people to get economic benefit from it. And if the member was uh, prepared to, well, well, the member over there, Mr Nash, calls out across the House, that is not true. Well, I look forward to him making a speech that will give the figures that will indicate that it is an economically rational decision to put in a sufficient uh, a photovoltaic panel on a roof of a house to run that house and provide a bit of surplus, and that surplus to actually pay for the capital investment over a reasonable period of time. If it's over 25 years, it might happen. If it's over 30 years, it definitely will happen. But if it's over 10 years, it will not happen. And Mr Speaker, no amount of uh, uh, mucking around with the price is going to change that. The reality is that the more people who are taking electricity out of a, an embedded system, the higher the price for anyone else who has to take it from a network system. There's no getting away from that fact at all. And I, I was, uh, I'm not surprised that we're getting that from Mr Nash. He's a, uh, a man who was supportive of some of the dopey electricity reforms of the Labor government in the last uh, time uh, that they had the opportunity to be in government. Strong supporter of all of the compulsory arrangements around uh, 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 solar energy and everything. Well, he says now he wasn't there, but we know he was out knocking on doors telling people how good the Labor Party was at the time. Mr Speaker, uh, this is not a bill that I or the National Party will be supporting. Two minutes? Two, two minutes. minutes. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's right. Because there's a lot more I want to say about the dopey policies of the Labor Party during that time. That, in a nine-year period, a nine-year period, we had no less than four electricity crises. Four. Four times the government went to New Zealanders and said, there's a problem, the lakes are too low, we're going to have to ask you all to conserve electricity, and by the way, we're going to have to build this massive white elephant, uh, the, the reserve generation capacity. We're going to spend, spend $90 million building it and another $90 million feeding it with diesel fuel. Very, very clean for the environment. Mr Speaker, it took simply a reform of the electricity marketing arrangements to ensure that in the last, the last seven years there has not been an electricity prices. We're now seeing electricity prices fall and in 2014 we saw the driest year in New Zealand's history and not one flicker of the lights. So Mr Speaker, uh, this is one of those sort of nice feel-good ideas that will cost people who have the least capacity to buy into it a great deal more than they're paying at the moment.